I am Lucas Mack, and I'm on a mission to see the hurting get healed and the healed go out and heal others in order for all of us to experience the true love and light we desire. This podcast is me sharing my journey with you so you don't feel alone in your journey. Welcome to the Golden Rule Revolution. Hello, dear brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack. Thank you for joining. It's been a while since I posted a podcast because I've been going through a lot, holding space for my wife, who's on a healing journey, um, physical stuff. I, I referenced it last last podcast, which I think this is the longest gap I've ever gone without podcasting uh, since I started, but have not been able to find the space for myself to podcast. However, this morning I realized that there's something I'm learning that I need to share with all of you so that as you're learning, we all can find the peace that comes through freedom of acknowledging our deepest pain. So there is a lot going on in this world. It it utterly seems insane. The world seems insane. I mean, you don't have to be conspiracy theorists to look at the politicians or doctors that are brought forth on TV and look at a picture of them from five years ago and look at the, or two years ago and look at a picture of them today. And they don't look like the same people. The, the amount of gaslighting on a global scale is so intense that those that never awoken to the truth are wandering in in the wilderness in darkness and those that are searching for the truth or seek the truth or love the truth also in a way seem to be wandering in the wilderness it it both it, it just seems complete complete in that the confusion the propaganda the The lies, the deception, the trauma, the fear, all of this seems to be complete in that everywhere we look, it is there. And why is this so? If God is love, which God is love, no doubt about it, the fact that we're even here to contemplate, to acknowledge, and to receive another day, another breath, another opportunity, another moment is all because we are receiving the love of God intentionally or unintentionally, but God is love. And with all this happening, why is it so? It is because we, my dear brother and sister, you and I, are getting the opportunity to see how we respond to this fear, to this completeness, to this lie and propaganda. You see, whatever we experienced as children gets brought up in a pattern when trauma, fear, and pressure is applied to each and every one of us. And for for myself, an incredibly scary event the other night. I've had, quite frankly, many scary events since um, my last podcast in October with my wife's health. And what I want to share today and, and try not to get too personal and give too many details and also I'm still in the midst of it, but what I want to share is that
I'm helping my wife. I'm supporting my wife in her physical healing, being there, took her to the hospital the other night. And my children, I have four kids and two were sick and it's just been intense and working and the pressure of providing for our family and, and all the things that are going on in this world. I realized my wife was like asking me for, how do I say this? She was asking me to hold space for her emotionally, not just physically. And it was making me angry, not at her, but just angry, angry at the whole situation, angry at God, angry at my life, angry that I've I've experienced so much trauma that it just made me angry. Like why? And then I was like, am I a bad person? (laughs) Am I wrong? Am I broken? This is a default pattern that I can fall into if I'm I'm wrong or I'm broken or I don't work right. And I recognize that pattern I'm like that is not true. So what is it? And I and I realized what it was and it was um in the household that I grew up in it was so insane. So insane. That my mom needed used I would say needed also used me as the emotional husband for her and would suck all this energy away from me and constantly needed me. And I hated it. If I felt like the physical abuse, (laughs) all the abuse. And then this woman who I was trying to protect also wanted something from me that I just wanted to escape from truly wished I could go away. I'll never forget it. My wife and I were talking about this the other day when the first time I saw Forrest Gump, I'll never forget when Jenny's in the field as a little girl praying, please God, make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away. Please God, make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away. Like that was what I had prayed for so long just to get me out of here. And then I tried the suicide attempt route and hated myself and wanted to leave my body. I used to ask God to kill me, take me out in this instant, just take me out of this realm. And that's not, that's, that is the format of the only way out is out, which is not freedom, which is not a hero's journey, which is not conquering, which is not victory, which is not power in love and truth and freedom that is in fear and dread. And so that was my childhood pattern. Now I'm in this other role where I am a husband. I am a father. I work many different things. I have a lot going on, coaching clients, business that I run, management consulting, doing all sorts of stuff. And yet here I was getting asked again. I was again afraid and then again asked to be emotional. And what I realized is, and I told my wife that at this moment, I am at capacity. And I've realized, well, am I, is it true? Is that a story? Do I, can I give more emotionally? And last night it was interesting. It was like, I'm to give more. And I told her this to, to, I don't know if it's humanly possible for me to go back into that place and find the power of that little child before it got taken to just be emotionally giving. I, it is hard to describe because it's not like I'm not being emotional, uh, being present and, my, and you know, trying to hold it down for everyone, everything. It's that um, I almost wonder if I would dissolve away. I, it's like, is it even humanly possible? Is it? I don't know. And I'm talking to you right now, asking myself that question. And yet somewhere I know it is. <laughs> so wouldn't it surprise me that I come on a podcast 
at some point and share the journey of how I actually did go down to the very almost etheric space of my beingness to be able to not feel the dread, fear, suffocation, and claustrophobia of being emotionally needed while I was purely trying to survive. I think that's really distilled down to what it is. I share this with you all. (laughs) Is that in times of trauma as adults, what gets brought forth is the patterning of survival that we had as children. So whatever the imprint is that you carry with you today, if you have a fear of money and you think you might die, or like I remember my mom grabbing me when I was in fifth grade and praying for food because food got cut off from us and it's craziest, the craziest shit, but like not enough money for me equates to I'm going to (laughs) die. And so I've had to do so much work around the money narrative and just all this stuff. I mean, guys, my life has been so (laughs) it's been, it's been so beautiful and it's like complete duality as dark and evil and vile as it was. It's also become so beautiful and virtuous and, and loving. It's just incredible. The contrast to see both. Um, but I share that is to say, whatever you're going through right now, if you look at the world and see how crazy it is, if you, if politics and religion and whatever it is, just know that your response to these events are from traumas past. And I don't have the answer today to say, well, I have, I realized this and I did these things and I came through the other side and here we are and have a beautiful life, everyone. (laughs) Nope. I don't have that. What I do have is to say I'm acknowledging it in myself. And I do know that the truth is our response to trauma is from imprints of our childhood survival. And so give yourself, and I think this is the message I need to, this is coming in for me right now, this download, and it's coming in for all of you, is just to give yourself grace. Give yourself grace and permission to walk through this. There is no such thing as being perfect in our act. It is that we perfectly receive the love of God. That is what being perfect is. Jesus said, be perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect, meaning to be in love, to receive his love. It's not the acts. It's not the transgressions. It's the receiving and walking in and breathing in the love of God. So give yourself grace through this period. We all need grace. We all need more love, more light, more hope, more vision, and the knowingness that all these things that are good will come to pass. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Well, how can you be the called if you don't first have ears to hear? So Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. It is us in the community of this planet that are seeking truth, walking in truth, desiring freedom. Those are the ones, we are the ones who have ears to hear. So we are the ones who are called. So we are the called and all things are working together for good. And I just want to share that with you, this short message that (laughs) holidays coming up, everything's coming up, everything's getting swirled around. Just know that you are loved and to give yourself more grace during this time because more grace is available. More love is available. More peace is available. And I share this as I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm reminding myself of the infinite and unconditional, eternal and omnipotent love of the creator. 
And in that, I bless you all. I love you all. I, I just send love to each and every one of you. I am Lucas Mack. This is the Golden Rule Revolution. And I'll talk to you on the next episode. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. For support in your journey, go to my website, lucasmack.com. Thank you.